Materialism is a form of philosophical monism which holds that matter is the fundamental substance in nature, and that all things, including mental aspects and consciousness, are results of material interactions. In idealism, mind and consciousness are first-order realities to which matter is subject and secondary. In philosophical materialism the converse is true. Here mind and consciousness are by-products or epiphenomena of material processes the biochemistry of the human brain and nervous system, for example, without which they cannot exist. According to this doctrine the material creates and determines consciousness, not vice versa. Materialist theories are mainly divided into three groups. Naive materialism identifies the material world with specific elements e.g. the scheme of the four elements. Fire, air, water and earth devised by the pre-Socratic philosopher Empedocles. Metaphysical materialism examines separated parts of the world in a static, isolated environment. Dialectical materialism adapts the Hegelian dialectic for materialism, examining parts of the world in relation to each other within a dynamic environment. Materialism is closely related to physicalism, the view that all that exists is ultimately physical. Philosophical physicalism has evolved from materialism with the discoveries of the physical sciences to incorporate more sophisticated notions of physicality than mere ordinary matter, such as, space-time, physical energies and forces, dark matter, and so on. Thus the term, physicalism, is preferred over, materialism, by some, while others use the terms as if they are synonymous. Philosophies contradictory to materialism or physicalism include idealism, pluralism, dualism, and other forms of monism. Overview Materialism belongs to the class of monist ontology. As such, it is different from ontological theories based on dualism or pluralism. For singular explanations of the phenomenal reality, materialism would be in contrast to idealism, neutral monism, and spiritualism. Despite the large number of philosophical schools and subtle nuances between many, all philosophies are said to fall into one of two primary categories, which are defined in contrast to each other, idealism and materialism. The basic proposition of these two categories pertains to the nature of reality, and the primary distinction between them is the way they answer two fundamental questions. What does reality consist of? And how does it originate? To idealists, spirit or mind or the objects of mind ideas are primary, and matter secondary. To materialists, matter is primary, and mind or spirit or ideas are secondary, the product of matter acting upon matter. The materialist view is perhaps best understood in its opposition to the doctrines of immaterial substance applied to the mind historically, famously by Rene Descartes. However, by itself, materialism says nothing about how material substance should be characterized. In practice, it is frequently assimilated to one variety of physicalism or another. Materialism is often associated with reductionism, according to which the objects or phenomena individuated at one level of description, if they are genuine, must be explicable in terms of the objects or phenomena at some other level of description—typically, at a more reduced level. Non-reductive materialism explicitly rejects this notion, however, taking the material constitution of all particulars to be consistent with the existence of real objects, properties, or phenomena not explicable in the terms canonically used for the basic material constituents. Jerry Fodor influentially argues this view, according to which empirical laws and explanations in special sciences, like psychology or geology are invisible from the perspective of basic physics. A lot of vigorous literature has grown up around the relation between these views. Modern philosophical materialists extend the definition of other scientifically observable entities such as energy, forces, and the curvature of space. However philosophers such as Mary Midgley suggest that the concept of matter is elusive and poorly defined. Materialism typically contrasts with dualism, phenomenalism, idealism, vitalism, and dual aspect monism. Its materiality can, in some ways, be linked to the concept of determinism, as espoused by Enlightenment thinkers. During the 19th century, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels extended the concept of materialism to elaborate a materialist conception of history centered on the roughly empirical world of human activity practice, including labor and the institutions created, reproduced, or destroyed by that activity see materialist conception of history. 
Later Marxists, such as Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky developed the notion of dialectical materialism which characterized later Marxist philosophy and method. History Axial age Materialism developed, possibly independently, in several geographically separated regions of Eurasia during what Karl Jaspers termed the Axial Age c. 800 BC. In ancient Indian philosophy, materialism developed around 600 BC with the works of Ahita Kesakambali, Payazi, Kannada, and the proponents of the Karvaka school of philosophy. Kannada became one of the early proponents of atomism. The Nyaya Vicesika school c. 600 BC to 100 BC developed one of the earliest forms of atomism, though their proofs of God and their positing that consciousness was not material precludes labeling them as materialists. Buddhist atomism and the Jaina school continued the atomic tradition. Ancient Greek atomists like Leucippus, Democritus, and Epicurus prefigure later materialists. The Latin poem De Rerum Natura by Lucretius 99 BC, c. 55 BC reflects the mechanistic philosophy of Democritus and Epicurus. According to this view, all that exists is matter and void, and all phenomena result from different motions and conglomerations of base material particles called atoms, literally, indivisibles. De rerum natura provides mechanistic explanations for phenomena such as erosion, evaporation, wind, and sound. Famous principles like, nothing can touch body but body first appeared in the works of Lucretius. Democritus and Epicurus however did not hold to a monist ontology since they held to the ontological separation of matter and space i.e. space being another kind, a being, indicating that the definition of materialism is wider than given scope for in this article. <laughs> Common era Wang Chong 27 c. 100 AD was a Chinese thinker of the early Common Era said to be a materialist, later Indian materialist Jayarashi Bhatta 6th century in his work Tattvopapavasimha, the upsetting of all principles, refuted the Nyaya Sutra epistemology. The materialistic Karvaka philosophy appears to have died out some time after 1400. When Madhavacharya compiled Sarva Darsana Samgraha a digest of all philosophies in the 14th century, he had no Karvaka, Lokayata text to quote from, or even refer to. In early 12th century Al-Andalus, the Arabian philosopher, Ibn Tufail Abubasir, wrote discussions on materialism in his philosophical novel, Hayy ibn Yaqdin Philosophus Autodidactus, while vaguely foreshadowing the idea of a historical materialism. Modern philosophy Thomas Hobbes and Pierre Gassendi represented the materialist tradition in opposition to the attempts of René Descartes to provide the natural sciences with dualist foundations. There followed the materialist and atheist Abbé Jean Meslier (1664–1729) and the works of the French materialists Julien Offray de la Metterie, the German-French Baron Dolbach (1723–1789), Denis Diderot (1713–1784), and other French Enlightenment thinkers. In England, John Walking. Stuart insisted in seeing matter as endowed with a moral dimension had a major impact on the philosophical poetry of William Wordsworth In late modern philosophy, German dialectical materialist and atheist anthropologist Ludwig Feuerbach would signal a new turn in materialism through his book, The Essence of Christianity which presented a humanist account of religion as the outward projection of man's inward nature. Another notable school of naturalist thought that developed in the middle of the 19th century was German materialism. Members included Ludwig Buchner, Jacob Moleschott, and Karl Vogt. Feuerbach's materialism would later heavily influence Karl Marx, who in the late 19th century elaborated the concept of historical materialism, which is the basis for what Marx and Engels outlined as scientific socialism. 
The materialist conception of history starts from the proposition that the production of the means to support human life and, next to production, the exchange of things produced, is the basis of all social structure, that in every society that has appeared in history, the manner in which wealth is distributed and society divided into classes or orders is dependent upon what is produced, how it is produced, and how the products are exchanged. From this point of view, the final causes of all social changes and political revolutions are to be sought, not in men's brains, not in men's better insights into eternal truth and justice, but in changes in the modes of production and exchange. They are to be sought, not in the philosophy, but in the economics of each particular epoch. Later, Vladimir Lenin outlined philosophical materialism in his book Materialism and Imperio Criticism, which connected the political conceptions put forth by his opponents to their anti-materialist philosophies. Therein, Lenin attempted to answer questions concerning matter, experience, sensations, space and time, causality, and freedom. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary philosophy. Topic. Continental philosophy Contemporary continental philosopher Giles Deleuze has attempted to rework and strengthen classical materialist ideas. Contemporary theorists such as Manuel de Landa, working with this reinvigorated materialism, have come to be classified as new materialist in persuasion. New materialism has now become its own specialized subfield of knowledge, with courses being offered on the topic at major universities, as well as numerous conferences, edited collections, and monographs devoted to it. Jane Bennett's book Vibrant Matter Duke Up, 2010, has been particularly instrumental in bringing theories of monist ontology and vitalism back into a critical theoretical fold dominated by poststructuralist theories of language and discourse. Scholars such as Mel Y. Chen and Zakia Iman Jackson, however, have critiqued this body of new materialist literature for its neglect in considering the materiality of race and gender in particular. Other scholars such as Eline Vosters have questioned whether there is anything particularly new about this so-called new materialism, as indigenous and other animist ontologies have attested to what might be called the vibrancy of matter for centuries. Topic. Analytic philosophy Contemporary analytic philosophers—e.g., Daniel Dennett, Willard Van Orman Quine, Donald Davidson, and Jerry Fodor—operate within a broadly physicalist or scientific materialist framework, producing rival accounts of how best to accommodate mind, including functionalism, anomalous monism, identity theory, and so on. Scientific materialism is often synonymous with, and has so far been described, as being a reductive materialism. In recent years, Paul and Patricia Churchland have advocated a radically contrasting position at least, in regards to certain hypotheses. Eliminativist materialism holds that some mental phenomena simply do not exist at all, and that talk of those mental phenomena reflects a totally spurious folk psychology, an introspection illusion. That is, an eliminative materialist might believe that a concept like belief simply has no basis in fact. The way folk science speaks of demon-caused illnesses would be just one obvious example. Reductive materialism being at one end of a continuum our theories will reduce to facts and eliminative materialism on the other certain theories will need to be eliminated in light of new facts, revisionary materialism is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Defining matter The nature and definition of matter, like other key concepts in science and philosophy, have occasioned much debate. Is there a single kind of matter which everything is made of, or multiple kinds? Is matter a continuous substance capable of expressing multiple forms hylomorphism, or a number of discrete, unchanging constituents atomism? Does it have intrinsic properties substance theory, or is it lacking them prima materia? One challenge to the traditional concept of matter as tangible stuff came with the rise of field physics in the 19th century. Relativity shows that matter and energy, including the spatially distributed energy of fields, are interchangeable. This enables the ontological view that energy is prima materia and matter is one of its forms. On the other hand, the standard model of particle physics uses quantum field theory to describe all interactions. 
On this view it could be said that fields are prima materia and the energy is a property of the field. According to the dominant cosmological model, the lambda CDM model, less than 5% of the universe's energy density is made up of the matter described by the standard model of particle physics, and the majority of the universe is composed of dark matter and dark energy with little agreement amongst scientists about what these are made of. With the advent of quantum physics, some scientists believed the concept of matter had merely changed, while others believed the conventional position could no longer be maintained. For instance Werner Heisenberg said, "...the ontology of materialism rested upon the illusion that the kind of existence, the direct actuality of the world around us, can be extrapolated into the atomic range. This extrapolation, however, is impossible atoms are not things." Likewise, some philosophers feel that these dichotomies necessitate a switch from materialism to physicalism. Others use the terms materialism and physicalism interchangeably the concept of matter has changed in response to new scientific discoveries thus materialism has no definite content independent of the particular theory of matter on which it is based according to noam chomsky any property can be considered material if one defines matter such that it has that property topic <laughs> physicalism George Stack distinguishes between materialism and physicalism. In the 20th century, physicalism has emerged out of positivism. Physicalism restricts meaningful statements to physical bodies or processes that are verifiable or, in principle, verifiable. It is an empirical hypothesis that is subject to revision and, hence, lacks the dogmatic stance of classical materialism. Herbert Feigl defended physicalism in the United States and consistently held that mental states are brain states and that mental terms have the same referent as physical terms. The 20th century has witnessed many materialist theories of the mental, and much debate surrounding them. However, not all conceptions of physicalism are tied to verificationist theories of meaning or direct realist accounts of perception. Rather, physicalists believe that no element of reality is missing from the mathematical formalism of our best description of the world. Materialist physicalists also believe that the formalism describes fields of insentience. In other words, the intrinsic nature of the physical is non-experiential. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Criticism and alternatives. From scientists Rudolf Peierls, a physicist who played a major role in the Manhattan Project, rejected materialism, saying, "...the premise that you can describe in terms of physics the whole function of a human being including knowledge and consciousness, is untenable. There is still something missing," Erwin Schrödinger said. "...consciousness cannot be accounted for in physical terms." For consciousness is absolutely fundamental. It cannot be accounted for in terms of anything else. Werner Heisenberg, who came up with the uncertainty principle, wrote, The ontology of materialism rested upon the illusion that the kind of existence, the direct actuality of the world around us, can be extrapolated into the atomic range. This extrapolation, however, is impossible. Atoms are not things. Quantum mechanics Some 20th-century physicists such as Eugene Wigner and Henry Stapp and modern-day physicists and science writers—such as Paul Davies and John Gribbin—have argued that materialism has been disproven by certain scientific findings in physics, such as quantum mechanics and chaos theory. In 1991, Gribbin and Davies released their book The Matter Myth, the first chapter of which the death of materialism," contained the following passage. Then came our quantum theory, which totally transformed our image of matter. The old assumption that the microscopic world of atoms was simply a scaled-down version of the everyday world had to be abandoned. Newton's deterministic machine was replaced by a shadowy and paradoxical conjunction of waves and particles, governed by the laws of chance, rather than the rigid rules of causality. 
An extension of the quantum theory goes beyond even this, it paints a picture in which solid matter dissolves away, to be replaced by weird excitations and vibrations of invisible field energy. Quantum physics undermines materialism because it reveals that matter has far less substance than we might believe. But another development goes even further by demolishing Newton's image of matter as inert lumps. This development is the theory of chaos, which has recently gained widespread attention. Topic. Digital physics Davies and Gribbon's objections are shared by proponents of digital physics who view information rather than matter to be fundamental. Famous physicist and proponent of digital physics John Archibald Wheeler wrote, "...all matter and all things physical are information theoretic in origin and this is a participatory universe." Their objections were also shared by some founders of quantum theory, such as Max Planck, who wrote, As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about atoms this much, there is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious and spiritual views. According to Konstantin Gutberlet writing in Catholic Encyclopedia 1911, materialism defined as a philosophical system which regards matter as the only reality in the world denies the existence of God and the soul." In this view materialism could be perceived incompatible with most world religions. Materialism could be conflated with atheism. However Friedrich Lang wrote in 1892, "...Diderot has not always in the encyclopedia expressed his own individual opinion, but it is just as true that at its commencement he had not yet got as far as atheism and materialism." Most of Hinduism and Transcendentalism regards all matter as an illusion called maya, blinding humans from knowing the truth. Transcendental experiences like the perception of Brahman are considered to destroy the illusion. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Latter day Saint movement, taught, There is no such thing as immaterial matter. All spirit is matter, but it is more fine or pure, and can only be discerned by purer eyes. We cannot see it, but when our bodies are purified, we shall see that it is all matter. This spirit element is believed to always have existed and to be co-eternal with God. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Philosophical objections. Kant argued against all three forms of materialism: subjective idealism, which he contrasts with his transcendental idealism, and mind-body dualism. However, Kant also argues that change and time require an enduring substrate, and is so in connection with his refutation of idealism. Postmodern, poststructuralist thinkers also express a skepticism about any all-encompassing metaphysical scheme. Philosopher Mary Midgley, among others, argues that materialism is a self-refuting idea, at least in its eliminative form. Topic: <laughs> Idealisms. An argument for idealism, such as those of Hegel and Berkeley, is ipso facto an argument against materialism. Matter can be argued to be redundant, as in bundle theory, and mind-independent properties can in turn be reduced to subjective percepts. Berkeley presents an example of the latter by pointing out that it is impossible to gather direct evidence of matter, as there is no direct experience of matter, all that is experienced is perception, whether internal or external. As such, the existence of matter can only be assumed from the apparent perceived stability of perceptions, it finds absolutely no evidence in direct experience. If matter and energy are seen as necessary to explain the physical world, but incapable of explaining mind, dualism results. Emergence, holism, and process philosophy seek to ameliorate the perceived shortcomings of traditional especially mechanistic materialism without abandoning materialism entirely. Topic. Materialism as methodology 
Some critics object to materialism as part of an overly skeptical, narrow or reductivist approach to theorizing, rather than to the ontological claim that matter is the only substance. Particle physicist and Anglican theologian John Polkinghorne objects to what he calls promissory materialism, claims that materialistic science will eventually succeed in explaining phenomena it has not so far been able to explain. Polkinghorne prefers dual aspect monism to materialism. Some scientific materialists have been criticized, for example by Noam Chomsky, for failing to provide clear definitions for what constitutes matter, leaving the term materialism without any definite meaning. Chomsky also states that since the concept of matter may be affected by new scientific discoveries, as has happened in the past, scientific materialists are being dogmatic in assuming the opposite. See also <laughs> Notes <laughs>